Welcome back to Movie Shortens, where today is going to be twice as nice as we have two recaps for you today. In our first episode, Harry is a hypochondriac with a new imaginary disease every month. He visits his doctor with hideous symptoms. Usually, she prescribes him a placebo pill, and he's magically cured. But this time, a capsule with nothing in it won't do the trick, because Harry's disease is bizarre, highly contagious, and has horrific symptoms, and is fatal. Dr. Leslie Coburn, a gifted physician, starts her shift seeing a girl fighting with Nurse Rhonda, who's giving her a shot. Coburn compliments the child, then sneaks in the flu vaccine, leaving the girl smiling. Harry Radich storms in and demands to see Dr. Coburn. Rhonda tries to stop him. Dr. Coburn interrupts and lets him wait in an examination room. She explains to Rhonda that Harry is a hypochondriac and he frequently comes in with imaginary illnesses. She just gives him a placebo, then he's fine. Dr. Coburn asks him to describe his symptoms and he shows her the burst sclera of his eye uncontrolled bleeding, and then opens his shirt to reveal giant cysts resembling those of the bubonic plague. Coburn runs some tests, but they come back negative for most known diseases. She consults with the head physician, Dr. Marks, who advises her to assign him to a psychiatrist since he's come in with imaginary illnesses so many times before. But Dr. Coburn says he has unusual cells in his blood, and this is the first time he's ever shown real symptoms. So she decides to run some more tests. She tells Harry that he doesn't have any common viral or bacterial infections. As she is stitching up his finger, she asks if he has traveled anywhere recently. He admits that he doesn't even leave the house anymore because he's afraid he'll catch some exotic disease. Harry says his housekeeper, Mrs. Mendelssohn, does all his shopping. Suddenly, he realizes that he probably spread the disease to her, and now she'll spread it to other people. He starts to panic, but she assures him it's probably just an allergic reaction. Coburn asks Rhonda to fax his file to the CDC, and she notices he lists his career as a book dealer. She asks Harry if he's received any shipments of books from another country. He confides in her that he did get the disease from a book because it's the deadly illness he was reading about. He shows her mission to Zebulon, stating his virus is the exact symptoms described in the science fiction book. She reads off the symptoms, and they fit. She tells him it's a fictional disease and is perturbed that she took him seriously this time. She is about to have him transferred to the psych ward when Mrs. Mendelssohn comes in and collapses on the floor. The housekeeper has all the symptoms of the Zebulon virus and is bleeding out. She dies right there on the floor. Rhonda asks how Harry could spread a fictional disease. Dr. Coburn takes off her jacket and she too has cysts all over her arms. The whole hospital is quarantined and all are being checked. Dr. Marx calls, but she doesn't tell him about the book. Harry's condition remains unchanged. Dr. Coburn shows him that she's caught it too. She asks him to tell her how it started. Harry says he was reading the book last night and the story was so hauntingly vivid that he couldn't get it out of his mind. Coburn's condition is getting worse and now Rhonda has caught the disease too. Rhonda asks how they beat the disease in the book. Coburn reads that they didn't find a cure and everyone died. Coburn realizes that Harry's imagination convinced him he caught the disease and his imagination made it real. Now, they have to convince Harry that they found a cure that works and give it to him, the placebo effect. Just because the book didn't have a happy ending doesn't mean that they can't continue the story by adding an ending where a cure is discovered. Coburn sees a news article about a meteor shower and gets an idea. She asks Harry if he heard about the meteor shower and tells him a meteorite hit the earth. He immediately says that would be impossible because nobody felt it. She goes on to say it hit a rural area and it was felt for hundreds of miles. Harry starts to panic saying a meteor could destroy the earth like it did when the dinosaurs went extinct. 
Harry has read many books about meteors and thinks if one hit, it would bring on an ice age in a matter of hours. Ah, uh, science fiction, so inaccurate. Meteors hit the Earth at least twice a year. But Coburn says it didn't bring on a disaster, just the opposite, in fact. It delivered a miracle cure. Her plan is to have a CDC man bring in a fancy container with a syringe filled with a purple liquid. She will tell Harry this is a rare element from another world and it cures this particular virus. She asks Harry to be a hero and test the vaccine. When it works, he will save all the people who caught it from him. So she injects him with the purple colored water. By now, everyone in the building is manifesting symptoms and time is running out. Hours later, Harry approaches Coburn and opens his shirt, showing that the cysts are gone and he is healed. Amazingly, everyone else who had the disease is better too. What a happy ending. Coburn decides to call Dr. Marks with the good news, but there is no answer. She opens the door to look outside and the entire world is frozen over. Is that Elsa I see behind that car? Harry's worrying about that meteorite causing an ice age made it actually happen. Coburn cries out, what have I done? So unfortunately, there will be no happy ending here. In hindsight, she should have told him it was just meteorite dust that fell to Earth or something less cataclysmic. It's time to call in the psychiatrist for Harry before he starts singing, let it go. In our second episode, when her son is kidnapped, Donna will go to hell and back to save him. But later, she finds out it's all being recorded live for a TV show. The risks she'll take become even more extreme. Let's tune in to find out what happens. Donna and her husband Ted are paying, or should I say, skipping most of the monthly bills. They're flat broke. Ted is on his way to a job interview, and if he gets it, all their problems will be solved. Wiley, their son, has overheard them fretting, so he's trying to bend his teeth straight so he won't need braces. Can't blame a guy for trying. This happy family all says goodbye and I love you to each other as Wiley heads to school and Ted to the airport. Later, while visiting a spa, Donna discovers her son never showed up for school. Her reality has just taken a major detour. She freaks out and runs to the police station to report a possible kidnapping. When she arrives, Donna approaches the desk and takes out a picture of Wiley, then shows it to the camera crew, believing them to be reporters. Nick Dark, the show host, grabs her hands and tells her she's been selected to be a player on the new reality game show called How Much Do You Love Your Kid? It's like the amazing race, only the stakes are much higher. Now, if they replace the kid with a dog or even a cat, now that would be a great show. Nick tells her she has 60 minutes to find her son, and if she does, she wins half a million dollars. Um, you know she would have done this for free. The TV crew will follow with cameras and a van. If she solves the clues correctly, they will lead her to Wiley. They then have her watch a video of him being abducted by some man. Nick keeps playing to the camera while Donna is freaking out. She can't believe a game show has a right to do this. When she goes to the police officer, he says the show is licensed and then smiles and gives her the first clue. She agrees to play, so they wire her up. Clue number one, a horse of a different color. She figures it's Green Mountain Park and tails there. If you want raw human drama, follow along. She calls her husband, but he says he's on the plane, and the call breaks up. She runs to the park asking people about her son until the hot dog vendor reveals he has the clue. He tells her of the Lord of the Rings as the clue, which leads her to Bell Kennels. Bell's ring, God backwards, is dog. She's running to save Wiley's life as the TV crew just wants an exciting show. Nick even tries to get some commentary, asking her how she feels deep inside. How do you think she feels? She sees a man and runs up to him asking about her child. The man took the kid to the bathroom, then left a minute ago. Instead of showing her the direction, he takes out another clue. 
Name something other than water that tastes the same as it did 3,000 years ago. She says milk. And it's wrong. It's actually honey. She grabs the guy, struggling for the clue, so they give it to her anyway. She hears her son crying, leave me alone, outside, and sees a man in a red car take off. The television crew van pulls up and Donna insists on driving. She chases the car through the town, but it keeps going past a detour area and tumbles down a ravine. The paramedics come and rescue her son, but the culprit gets away. Donna hits a police officer asking how they could let this happen, and they just say, your kid's going to be okay, it's just a TV show. Her unconscious son is on the stretcher with some lacerations. Nick tries to act sympathetic, asking the camera crew to back off, but really he doesn't want the audience to hear him coaxing Donna to continue the drama. Nick tells her she can walk away with her half million or, for one million, go after the kidnapper. It's not about the money anymore, he says. It's about how much do you love your kid. Wiley wakes up and says, go get him, mom. Nick gives her a gun. Instead of trying to answer more clues, Donna uses the gun to steal the clue giver's car. She chases the guy through some backyards, around all kinds of obstacles, and finally catches him. He takes off his mask, and it's her husband, Ted. He claims he did it for the family, saying they offered him $3 million if he was able to get away with taking their son. Donna is screaming at him, saying he terrorized their son. Ted shows that Wiley bit right through his hand because he loved all the excitement. Donna loses her temper when Ted keeps saying their son isn't hurt and it was worth it for the money. Her husband blames her for costing them $2 million by catching him. She takes the gun and shoots him. The TV audience loves this action. Nick arrives and says, congratulations, Donna. You did it. You caught him. Now she's got her $1 million to spend on the best defense attorney for her murder trial. There's reality TV and there's entertainment. Don't underestimate how far television executives will go when they've discovered how entertaining traumatic situations can be. For future shows, the risk they will take and the line they will cross to get more ratings only stops at the Twilight Zone. So what do you think of these two episodes? Which one did you like better? Let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to watch more from Movie Shortens, click on the next video or the playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching.